Good morning and welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We are set to look at the big stories making uh, it to the front pages of the national dailies. Of course, we have Chris Kende Wando, uh, Executive Director of the African Leadership and Governance Initiative, right here as a guest in the Press on The Breakfast this morning. Uh, Mr. Wando, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Good morning. All right. Let's uh, begin a look at the uh, dailies this morning with the leadership which is our first port of call. Um, interesting uh, takes by the paper. Uh, it pays attention to the economic situation in the country uh, with this headline, uh, Nigerians resort to cheaper goods as inflation decks purchasing power. All right, Nigerians resort to cheaper goods as inflation decks purchasing power. The writer to that, uh, food inflation rises almost 100%. In 10 years, as Nigerians pay more for imported goods due to high exchange rate, and lose purchasing power to economic realities. Uh, food inflation rises almost 100% in 10 years, as Nigerians pay more for imported goods due to high exchange rate, lo lo lose a purchasing power to economic realities. There's an, uh, an, a nice infographic of uh, how inflation affects you and of course, some of the things that they're talking about, they've broken it down there. An interesting take by the paper uh, this morning. More from the leadership. PMB intervenes, uh, approves separate, separate energies acquisition of ExxonMobil shares. There's some, been some uh, you know, hula baloo about that, um, and it wasn't clear what was going on, whether that uh, deal would be able to sail through. But I think uh, now the coast is clear, like they say for it to sail through with that headline telling us PMB intervenes, approves separate energies acquisition of Exxon Mobil shares. At the top of that front page, you have two headlines. Uh, COVID-19, only three states have attained 50% vaccination FG. Uh, I'm leaving Commonwealth Games with new record to my name. Amusa is, uh, of course, basking in the glory of her victory at Birmingham. More from the leadership. WIAC releases 2022. WAS results records 76.36% pass. WIAC releases 2022. WAS results records 76.36% pass. Lawyer asks legal CJ to probe illegal eviction of court bailiffs. And U.S. releases new African policy to counter China, Russia. Uh, headlines on the front page of um, uh, the leadership. We must not forget this one as well. Uh, Rivers APC, weakest loyalists differ on governor's overtures to Tinubu. Of course, um, some APC governors were in River State uh, to commission certain projects and um, a video of uh, the Lagos State governor in the company of uh, the Eboing State governor, all APC members with Wiki. Uh, you know, shaking hands, uh, clasping and giving themselves high fives and sharing jokes in Port Harcourt has been all over the internet. Interesting times in the polity. Over to the Punch newspaper and let's uh, just take a look at some of the, uh, the stories on the front page of the Punch. Um, the big one there, Peace Talks Suffer, Wiki Descends on Atiku's Men. Peace Talks Suffer, Wiki's, uh, Wiki Descends on Atiku's Men. And the writers of that headline, you cannot go to Abuja and hold meetings against me, Wiki tells PDP chieftains. A Rivers governor uncomfortable with my closeness to Atiku, uh, Senator Meba is saying that. In, interesting. Why I'm saying that is interesting uh, because uh, Senator Meba is one of the people considered in the inner circle of, uh, to be in the inner circle of Wiki over the years. You know, the men who move with him. They don't have any, you know, designation, no office, you know, in River State, but they move with him when he's commissioning projects, when he's traveling, when he's campaigning, when he's visiting, going for events, when he's traveling. They are in his private jet, in his entourage, in the same bus as he is in. Um, and it's, it's interesting that uh, the man, Senator Meba, Lee Meba, is saying that uh, Wiki is uncomfortable with his closeness to Atiku. Uh, it's interesting. And don't forget... Uh, over the weekend, we came made a statement to give an, a statewide broadcast where he said that um, some politicians in the state are being used to destabilize uh, uh, and scuttle the security in River State with the meetings involving political thoughts. And so uh, that's what you get. <laughs> that's what you get in River State. Um, the last writer to that headline, we will use our votes 
We will use our votes against those who think Rivers doesn't matter, says Ricky. Let's move on. More from the punch. Shiites security agents clash in Kaduna, six killed. You can see pictures on that front page uh, that uh, tell the story, or part of the story. Uh, Agric budgets uh, hit 87 uh, billion, or 874 billion naira. Uh, food imports go up 7.81 trillion naira. Didn't intend to give you uh, a, a hard skip there. Agric budgets hit 80, 874 billion naira. Uh, food imports go up 7.81 trillion naira, not 78 trillion. That's 7.81 trillion naira. Uh, page 19 of the punch has that story. NUPRC FG disagree over mobile acquisition by Seplat. Uh, YAC releases 2022 WAS results withholds 365,564. Uh, Nigeria, three others to top World Bank debtors list. I mean, the issue of um, the piling debt, both domestic and international, uh, by Nigeria is uh, been of worry to uh, quite some uh, a number of um, uh, financial experts there. Uh, Shoinka knocks pirates confraternity for mocking Tinubu. Ondo Omoteku intercepts 168 invaders hiding under cows. Uh, kidnappers kill three, abduct women, children. Senator's relative and uh, Lagos Ibadan traffic hoodlums create tunnel, extort desperate motorists. It's, it's a bizarre one. Very, very, very strange. Uh, never had anything like that. All right, let's go over to the nation very quickly with these headlines. Yoruba, or Yoruba elders to Tinubu, your victory in 2023 is certain. Your victory in 2023 is certain. Uh, this writer says Southwest APC unfolds reconciliation plan. Ruling party's candidate will be different, says Kayamo. Uh, more from the nation. Showing cab slams pirates, confraternity for mocking a politician. Or right, note that the paper didn't say Tinubu in its own version. <laughs> uh, Diarie Yame, uh, others gain free, regain freedom. Uh, these were uh, politicians who had found themselves in prison. Uh, the writer to that says, uh, command confirms release. All right, so they're out of uh, prison. Uh, 2022 was WIKE withholds 365,000 results. How to cushion Nigeria's rising debt portfolio by LCCI. That's the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and uh, Industry. Uh, and the PDP postpones NEC uh, caucus meetings as Atiku Wiki rift deepens. Uh, and Nigeria loses 400,000 barrels of crude oil daily to theft says Silver. All right, uh, let's move over to the final paper on our table before bringing our guest, uh, Daily Trust. How FG injected 247 billion naira subsidy to salvage low electricity generation. One trillion naira power consumed in 16 months. Poor payment trajectory can be reversed. Experts, the Daily Trust, uh, uh, you know, showing a different uh, direction from other papers as it's done over the past few weeks with a, a story that is a uh, of a different um, nature. That's a big story there. More from the paper, 670 cases for deaths recorded as monkeypox hits Lagos, FCT, 22 others. This is a serious story. Uh, what will our people, our health authorities be doing about this? We need to hear. Buhari approves a $1.3 billion or dollar ExxonMobil oil assets acquisition by Seplet. Darie Yami, uh, three others out of prison four months after state Pardon. And uh, 22.1 million Kenyans to elect new president today. Uh, Quara couple chains woman for two weeks over witchcraft. Uh, will vote against those who ignore rivers. Wiki saying that one. And bandit kill FIRS boss chase woman into mosque. Abduct imam in Niger. That's Niger State. Now, we'll bring in our guest this morning, uh, Chris Kendi Wando. Uh, once again, good morning to you. Let's uh, start from the big one there. Uh, on the front page of the leadership this morning. Um, the economic situation in the country calling for attention, and that's what the leadership has done. Nigerians resort to cheaper goods as inflation decks purchasing power. Uh, Chris Kane, your, your reaction uh, to this? Uh, thank you very much once again for having me. Um, uh, the reality is on us, and uh, just as you say, look at Palan. Uh, everybody will cut it quotes according to his size now or cut it according to his body. Um, things are so difficult for everybody that Nigerians now 
are facing the reality of the economic uh, downturn in this country and the cuts across all strata that you are rich or poor or in the middle class. So anyway, that we no longer have middle class. What we have in Nigeria now is just the rich and the poor. It's either you are rich or you are poor. Uh, the middle class has been totally um, taken off the table. And uh, Nigeria now have to resort to making sure that they get the basic things they need to survive. Uh, no long, they no longer spend on uh, luxury. They no longer spend on things that uh, do, doesn't have direct value to their life. Uh, the basic things are now uh, clothing, feeding, and accommodation, and uh, transportation where necessary. Uh, to move from one point to another. And that is what we, what we find ourselves, where we have found ourselves. Uh, we've been talking over the year that the, uh, the reality will soon be here and it is here and everybody is switching between. So even the rich, uh, and the, as they say that, uh, in their movie, or uh, Mexican, uh, opera, rich also cry. Um, so I'm not surprised. By uh, they had like the leadership uh, on the issue of um, Nigerians cutting down on their life price and going for uh, what I would call cheaper, as they say, cheaper goods. Uh, but cheaper goods also come with its own uh, problem because when you engage in buying cheaper articles or goods, there is a possibility that uh, the fallout at times may not just be good. But what options do we have? Is between the devil and the TC as it were, uh, and that is where Nigerians are found themselves now. All right. Uh, let, let's quickly go over to uh, the punch. Um, uh, Wiki's um, overtures to uh, the APCs or the meeting with the APC governors, in particular, Samuel of Lagos State and David Mahi of uh, Boeing State, are captured on video. Um, of course, uh, this is after the likes of Rotimi Akiridolu, you know, and Samuel who had earlier visited him uh, in Port Harcourt still. But the punch is saying that uh, peace talks suffer. Wiki descends on Atiku's men, probably referring to what he's been, uh, you know, has been, you know, shouting or uh, fire and brimstone in, in 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 River State and warning anyone who cares to listen to 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 be careful. Um, the the paper believes that uh, uh, he is uh, going after Atiku's men in River State. For instance, they've uh, taken a statement from Senator Lee Meba, who, like I said earlier, is he's been Wiki's in a circle and they go everywhere together. Um, they say Libe Meba is, is saying that uh, Rivers Governor is uncomfortable with his closest to Atiku. So, uh, Chris Kenewando, one would have thought that with Week and Atiku meeting in Abuja last week that things would have been on the mend between these two and in the PDP. Yes, you know, that meeting, they had a meeting at the residence of uh, Professor Jerry Ghana. And um, from what we had, uh, the meeting, they came out of the meeting and they, uh, what we are told that was fruitful and there are going to be more engagement. Um, then let me just uh, let me talk on the visit of uh, of uh, uh, Governor Wajide uh, Sanwulu and the uh, Governor to River State of yesterday. He was there to commission. Sanwulu was invited to commission uh, a bridge that was built by the River State government. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with politics. If you have been following the week in the past few years, he has been doing that. He has been inviting people and governors from different political parties to come and commission um, projects in River State across starting line. It's not today he's doing it. So I don't see that connection between him trying to move to APC or not moving to APC. No, it is not true. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, except there's any other sister behind that. I've seen several uh, in the past where he has invited governors from opposition parties. Uh, I have also seen that even where he invited the uh, Minister of Works and Health in Fashola, he has invited the Vice President, he has invited some other governors from APC and other political parties. Even the Ebony governor has been invited several times in the past. So I don't see the connection between um, whether he wants to join EPC, I don't think that's it. But the fact for me is that all this wrangling and all this uh, historic statement thank you to uh, Mr. Wiki and his handlers, I'm finding it very uncomfortable. 
it is high time that they, they, they come to conclude, uh, a conclusion on this issue. The presidential act primary was held. We came, participated in that. Nobody stopped him from participating. And at the end of it, all, the party, Atiku Abu Bakr, as a flag bearer of the party. And I remember vividly that during the case, Winke came out categorically to say, can never be a vice president, uh, a presidential candidate, anybody. He won, it was on tape. That's true. So, at the um, end of Atiku, if I'm your coward, doctor of um, data state, as it's uh, running made. I don't see anywhere uh, sure Winke is going to come up with the rest of them. He's categorically stated that he is not going to be uh, a, a vice presidential candidate to anybody. So I think that um, the best thing in the issue within the party is to make sure that they get themselves reconciled. But to me, uh, personally, I just see this uh, statement being credited to Winke every now and then. is just a total distraction to the party. And as a party statement, I expect that um, the issue of the primary should be a thing of the past. And to join hands with the presidential candidate and the vice presidential candidate have been picked uh, by the party so that they are um, will and zeal to take over power from um, it in retreat will be a reality. I hope that will be done as okay. possible. And all this being green and talking and I think we are, for, for goodness sake, River State is just one out of 36. In the okay. federation, there is no way and determine who is the president of Nigeria. It's not possible. Not possible. What, yes, what, what, what would, Chris Kenny, what the governor has, has, the governor has said that. The, they are yeah. to the, table. the fact remains that River State is still one out of the, the federation. Yes, they might be able to bring up a high level of vote, but River State vote no, cannot determine the president of Nigeria. And the earlier the River State does not get to know that. The better for him that it is high time that he closes rank with uh, the presidential candidate of his party. Let them to be able to be able to ensure that they win election in 2023. In days of uh, the issue of um, becoming an aspirant as presidential candidate or vice presidential candidate, is gone. And that is my own personal opinion. All right. I think you've you've covered all the issues as far as that uh, headline is concerned. So let's um, move to some other ones uh, from. Uh, the punch on the front page, you see pictures of uh, uh, protesting Shiites in Kaduna. Uh, you see one particular picture that shows a gentleman on the floor. Um, and the paper says that the security agents and the uh, uh, Shiites clashed in Kaduna. Uh, it also says that six people were said to have been killed in, in that uh, incident. What are your thoughts on this? I said that the issue of Shiites have been put to rest for a long time since the release of uh, El Vazaki. Um, by the court, and I know that uh, he has been uh, he has been at home. I don't know where this comes uh, came up again, and uh, where Shiites are, are now confronting uh, security agencies. I don't have the full details of that clash where, uh, but uh, it's not it, it, this is not the best of time for such to take uh, to take me because Kaduna as a, a state is having serious security uh, uh, problem. Uh, in Southern Kaduna, there is problem. The bandits and kidnappers are running riot in Kaduna. You remember the train attack um, that was uh, moving between Abuja and Kaduna. Also, remember with, uh, the attack at the Kaduna airport. These are so many other Lagos and the um, Kaduna Abuja Expressway is a no go area. So, there is a lot of security challenges facing um, Kaduna already. So, Bringing the Shiites into the mix will not help matters, and I hope that um, this, this will be nipped in the board as quickly as possible, just that it does not degenerate uh, into another fracas that is going to add so much salt to the insult as well as the level of uh, uh, incardinate. Okay. W what the paper is saying, that um, a short statement by the IMN, uh, that's the Islamic Movement of Nigeria, as a shared group, but is known as... Uh, stated that the incident occurred during the group's Ashura morning procession in Zaria, Zaria Kaduna. Um, they, so they have this morning procession they have from time to time, um, a morning procession which was observed, according to them, in their own statement, peacefully across Nigeria and in different parts of the world. Kofi, this same procession was what started the problem in, uh, between the security agencies and the uh, Shiites. 
remember vividly that uh, that procession at happened in Kaduna, where the convoy of the then chief of army staff was um, was blocked or something, and they couldn't give him a right or a, a right of way. That shooting and killing of so many Shiites in Kaduna so led to the uh, to the arrest their leader uh, and his wife. Ezazaki himself lost about four or five of his um, sons in that attack. So with the high security in the country now, I see no reason whether peaceful or not peaceful, how the Shiites will start going on procession where we have been serious security challenges in Nigeria, not only in Nigeria, but Kaduna. Why would they say the money? Is it compulsory that they must have that possession? Can they have the possession within their in their compound or within the confines of their of their post or wherever, they go around and around at this point. I don't think it's the right thing. And I think I believe that Ezraki by now is supposed to have learned his blessing. I know that this is not the time for such possession, possession whatever they call it. I think it is a, a security situation in Nigeria for now does not call for that. And they should be cautioned. And if they decide to go and decide to do what they have, to bring them in competition with the military, and at the end of it all, they will be the loser. They've lost so many members, and I thought by now, it has not been made to by make point in time. They, 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 they cautiously move, they move cautiously, and try to scale down their level of activities in Kaduna and around Nigeria. Nobody is getting, getting engaged, will be allowed to engage in all this kind of competition, which can be hijacked by bandits, by hoodlums, by kidnappers and undesirable and make the security situation in Kaduna and so many other parts of Nigeria um, make, it, make it very, very unsecure. So I totally disagree with that process, if at all it helps, and the reason being given for it. Okay, you, you, you're sounding like uh, some of our security agencies who normally would get uh, security reports where it's saying, you know, such a the procession could be, uh, um, you know, hijacked. Yes, could be. No, <laughs> the fact is that all of us have to be security conscious. All of us have to be security conscious. It doesn't even need to be. It doesn't need to be a, a chief of our IGO able to know what is happening. All right, all right, Things all right. Things are really feeling that so bad now. Okay, L let's move on to the nation um, newspaper. And uh, if you look at uh, the top of that front page, uh, it, the paper is telling us that four months after uh, they got their pardon, Darie, Joshua Darie, uh, former governors Joshua Darie and uh, Jolin Yami have been released from, from prison. Uh, Darie being the former governor of Plateau State and uh, Reverend Jolin Yami being former governor uh, of uh, um, uh, uh, Taraba State. You know, they've regained their freedom from the Kuje. Uh, Correctional Center Abuja, the same Kuje uh, that we've been talking about. Uh, this comes four months after they were granted a state pardon by the National Council of State with 159 uh, others. So uh, they're finally out. Your thoughts, Sir Chris Kenny Wanda? Covid that reminds me of that song by African China. Four months, we still John Mode will be uh, will be arrested by. Uh, uh, crime fighters and paraded by crime fighters. I hope you remember that song very well. Yes. Uh, by African China. Yes. What is only trying to tell you is that uh, the rich will always have their way. Before we always have, um, we also always be used as, as a guinea pig when it comes to. Well, uh, constitutionally, um, there is nothing wrong in what has happened. The national, I think, uh, the national uh, council of state. Um, granted, uh, governor, ex governor Darie and uh, Nyame, uh, presidential pardon. And, um, and we are, what that has done, it has been, um, signed by the president, prerogative of mess. Um, they will be released. Um, and they have, this was done, uh, about two or three months ago. I think that um, they just perfected the paper to allow them to go. They are not the only one, there are some other people. But to me, uh, it is a, a, a complete uh, negation of our fight against corruption. If this um, former chief executives keep their hands in the force of their state, and allegedly, it wasn't even allegedly because they were sent by the court, so they, they have been accused of stealing billions of naira. I believe that they're supposed to have been allowed to go through the process. As a deterrent for so many other of our leaders who presently are also doing that. Um, I think in this country, a stealing public funds, 
Nigerians continue to wallow in uh, abject poverty. I am totally against that pattern. But who am I? If the federal government, through its prerogative uh, of mercy uh, apparatus, decides to set them free and give them pardon, all well and good. But to me, it's a slap on the fight against corruption. And uh, I think that agencies like EFC uh, and the like will not be so happy with what is happening. There's nothing they can do about it. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, Chris Kedewado, thank you very much for your time uh, and for joining us on the breakfast this morning. It's been uh, a thrill having you with your expert analysis as usual uh, of these uh, newspaper headlines. I wish you could take more, but uh, unfortunately we're out of time. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me on the topic, my time. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we'll be back uh, with more as we drive straight to our first conversation this morning uh, on the breakfast we have standing by the national president of ASU, which is the Academic Staff Union of Universities, Nigeria's uh, uh, Universities Union. But before that, let's take a look at what happened today in history, and we'll be back on the other side. We're almost there. Just wait. Uh, very soon you will hear where we are going next. Of course, clearly you know my stand. And my stand is my stand.